we're talking about not just Jesus' love, but our love for him. Amen? If you will turn with me, please, and see how all this is going to link up, and I'll tell you the choir is on point. Just give them another round of applause, if you will. Thank you so much for both of your selections. Turn to Isaiah, the 49th chapter. We're just going to read one verse, the 16th verse, Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Those of you who have your word, those who may not, this will be on the screen. But we, of course, always encourage you to still bring your word. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 49. And I'm reading from the NIV version. Just reading the one verse of 16. And it reads, and this is, this is God speaking to Isaiah, to his people. And God is saying to his people, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Let me read that again so I can sink in. God is speaking. See, I have engraved you, 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 on the palms of my hands, and your walls are ever before me. Now just turn to your neighbor, if you will. I want you to minister to them, and this is what I want you to say, very simply. God really, really, really loves you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We praise you, dear God. And God, as we come forward at this time, as I decrease, dear Father, I pray for your increase. Pray that your word will come forth with power, with might. More importantly, Father, I pray that your word, and I stand on your word, that it will go forth and it will do everything that you have designed it to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 God really, really loves you. And I think someone needed to hear that today. That God really, really, really loves you. So often we talk about how important it is to be in a relationship with God. We often tell you about the importance of being in a relationship, telling you. But we don't always take the time to teach you about what that relationship looks like and how to be in a relationship. There is a difference between telling someone and teaching them or showing them. You know, you can have a coach, and the coach will have his team, if you will, his basketball team or whatever. And it is one thing for the coach to gather his or her team, and say, we need to win the game. You need to get the basket into, the ball rather, into the basket. But is that teaching them how to get the ball? Because I'm telling you what you need to do. It doesn't mean that you know how to do it. Or even what you're doing is even the right thing. And so often that we find, and I find, and I'm going to take responsibility because my responsibility is is to teach and to bring the word, and and it is the responsibility of all of us as the pastors here. And that is, is to talk to you about what it means to be in a relationship with God, but not only what it means to be in a relationship, but how to be in a relationship. What are those things that we need to do to draw closer to God? Would you accept my saying that I believe that most people, most Christian, if not all, 
really desire a deeper and more closer relationship with God. You want that thing. You want to feel like he is closer to you than a brother. You want to feel that connection. But is it also safe for me to say that even though many of us may desire it, we don't always feel it. We want it. But we don't necessarily know how to get to it. We don't necessarily know all of the things or what it is that we need to do of how to have that friend relationship, if you will, with God. Yes, we sing, um, I am a friend of God, and we sing it um, with feeling. But if we are really honest, how many of us really feel like, really feel like we are in a close intimate relationship with him? How many of us feel like we are best friends or have that best friend connection with God, even though we sing about it, although we talk about it? But is it a possibility that sometimes we secretly wish we had it, but really we don't have it? And we don't say anything about it. We don't mention it because we don't want anyone to think that something is wrong with us. So when everybody else hands are raised, we may raise our hands, but truth be told, we're trying to make that connection. My hand's up, but I'm just doing what everybody else is doing. I'm saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm doing because I feel that is what I'm supposed to do. But I really do want to be in this relationship. I really want to feel what everybody else is feeling, but I'm just not feeling that. So is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with what's going on, with what's happening? I, I, I envy people who, who, who appear to have it like that with God. I, I, I envy people who say, who talk about that they have had a conversation with God and, and how he spoke to them. And, and then I envy people and how we see how God blessed them and, 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 and seem like he responds to their every call. And yet I stand on the sideline and I wonder, does he really hear me when I call? Has anybody ever thought that or felt that before? We wonder if, if God has passed us by or if we even qualify to be in a relationship like that with him. Is there something wrong with me? What is going on within me that seems like I can't have or I don't have what that person next to me have or that brother across on the other section have? Why is it that it seems like for me, I don't feel or seem like I feel what everyone else is feeling. And so when we have those feelings, when we think the worst, when we think that we don't qualify for God's blessings or we think that we don't have a relationship with God or at least the relationship we have is not all of that good, we begin to question ourselves and we begin to, to uh, we, we pull away, if you will, and instead of praying for ourselves, we quickly would go and ask someone else to pray for us or to inquire uh, unto the Lord on our behalf because in our minds, we feel that that person that we are seeking to pray on our behalf, has an in exclusive track into God. So I go to them because it seems like they got that connection with God that I don't have. I don't think God will hear my prayer, but I think they will hear Pastor Queens. So I'm going to go to him, or I'm going to go to her, and I'm going to ask her or him or she to pray for me because I think they're a little closer to God than I am. I want to be close, I would like to be close, but maybe I don't qualify to be close, so maybe if I can just talk to someone else, they will talk to God on my behalf because they can get a word through because I think my word may not make it there. I just want to do some real talk. And so we, we pause. We pause and 
because we think God has certain people who are in his inner circle, if we will. We pause, we, we hesitate because we look at ourselves and again we think maybe we don't measure up or we are spiritually immature or, or we don't have enough God in us or we're not praying hard enough or we're not worshiping enough or, or we're not doing something enough. It's like we feel like there's something, I must be something I'm not doing because there's something that is missing within me. And so we come, all of us come to church. We have this mixed bag of Christians who are coming to church. You have some who feel like they're walking the road and they're doing, they got it like that with God. And then you have some who love the Lord. They pray every day. They, they hate missing church. That's why a lot of y'all right here now, y'all pressed on through, didn't care about the weather because you just didn't want to miss church this morning. So you just made it on out here. You know, you said the Lord will bring me back home. I'm just going to bring it on out here. And you, and you press through. So we have people who do that. They don't like missing their Bible study. They love participating in ministry. Yet, they don't always feel that connection with God. They feel like they're doing all of those things and they don't feel like they're making that connection. And then you have the other group of people who also don't feel like they're making that connection. They don't feel like they are in tune with God even though they're trying hard to be. They really, really, really love the Lord but they just don't think God always hears them. And so because they're missing it, they just decide, well, maybe I just hit and miss at coming to church. I come when I come. If I don't, I don't because I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm just not going to be in that inner circle. I'm never going to have it like that with God. Well, this morning, and to be honest with you, for however long it takes, and when I'm saying however long it takes, when we go into a series, sometimes it can go for a minute. Pastors, we're going to be talking about it even more because we just want to make sure we get it. And that is what we wanted to start really making sure that you get is an understanding of how to be in a relationship with God. Of what that relation looks like. Of how to be in one with him. How uh, important it is. And so we want to, to, to learn how to identify and to remove the barriers that block and hinder us from having a more intimate relationship with God. We really want to tear down those wrong images and, and thoughts and belief about God and how he relates to us. We want to deal with all of those pieces, if you will. But for this morning, I just want to deal with one little piece. And that one little piece I just want to deal with is that God really, really loves you. So many people don't get that. They love God, but they're not really sure how much God loves them if they want to be really honest. And so we want to talk about how God really loves you. And that the fact is, from just reading the passage this morning, that you... You, you, you are on God's mind right now. You are on God's mind, Erica. You are on God's mind, Caroline. You are on God's mind, Monica, at this very moment, at this instance, God is thinking about you. And you're ashamed, well, how can he be thinking about me when he has all these people? Well, that's God. We can't figure that part out. That's how he is. As the folks said, that's how he roll. But he has you. He's thinking about you constantly, and, and, and he wants to have a close and intimate relationship with you, and he loves you, and you are twisted about where you've been and what you've done. And God is saying, I don't care about where you've been and what you've done. I love you. I love you. Some of us have 
have come from a background, if you will. I know I did. I came from a background where in growing up, you know, I just imagined God was this long, you know, had this long beard and he sat up on this throne and he was all the way up in heaven. And I just had this thing that with God, you know, he was just sitting and waiting for you to mess up and do something wrong so he can say, you, me- you know, you wrong, you're getting ready, you're going to hell. <laughs> and he's sitting there and you know and you know how the old folks would say he sits high and looks low so I had a God in my mind this God he really was not down here with me because he's up there he got it made he you know he just controls and he tells who's going to have a good life and who's not going to have a good life who's going to go through trials and issues and struggles some of us he cares for and some of it doesn't that was that was my my uh, mentality, if you will, my paradigm, if you will, of how I thought and growing up and seeing who God is. Uh, but but, but we, uh, how he, 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 he chooses and he picks and chooses who he will help and who will suffer because we cannot help but look at people who struggle and we're going through changes and you begin to wonder, well, does God have some picks? Are there just certain people that he favors? Does it seem like some people he dumps all of the talents on and over here he only give you one? And then and that is not even a good one. <laughs> In our minds, you know, how we wrote, not even a good one. You know, like you just went to the bottom of the barrel, I'm going to give you what's left over. And so we have all of these thoughts about God and, 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 and then we pick up things over the way that makes us think that, that, that we have to talk to God in a certain way, that we have to pray a certain way, that we have to say certain words because if you don't say these certain words and you put them in a particular order, that somehow, some way, God's not going to hear it. You know, you got to make sure you get the right thee and the thou in a good place and, and all of this other kind of stuff. And, you know, you got to make sure that your hand is up high. You got to make sure, you know, that the praise is on because otherwise, if you don't have all of that, how in the world God going to hear you? We kind of grew up with that kind of thinking. I'm speaking on my behalf. I kind of grew up with that. And we begin to think that when we talk about people who have heard God speaking to them, and so we're going like, oh, I haven't heard him say Jack to me. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're going through all of those kind of changes, if you will, and you're wondering because, see, in your mind, because what people will say to you, Everybody has some kind of burning bush experience. It makes you think that the only way God talks to you is through a burning bush or he's going to write a message up on the clouds or he's going to break forth or send an angel and, and go hell. Um, thou art favored among men or among women. Let me tell you something. If an angel popped into your place right now and said, Hail Mary, you're going to run like I don't know what. Okay? Let's be honest. If we hear a booming voice calling us from heaven, Yolanda, <laughs> you're going to freak out. Can I get a witness? <laughs> so we want to get rid of, we want to get rid of those things, thinking. Not to say that God can't speak that way. God speaks how he wants, when he wants, however he wants. We just want to make that straight. But if I kind of recall, and if my memory serves me correctly, and pastors, you can correct me, he has not done any of that booming voice speaking lately. Amen? He just talks to us. But we're going to talk about that later on down the road, about how he talks to us. But what we just, again, we want to talk about that he wants to be close to us. Some of us need to change our perception that God has chosen a few who he allows to get close to him when the real truth is is that he really desires to be close to all of us. God wants, he wants us to trust him and not just believe that he exists. God, again, is not concerned with your past. He's not worried about your past or concerned with your past. God really wants to hang out with you. He really wants to just hang out with you. He really wants to roll when you roll up. He really wants to have that kind of connection with us, that, that relationship with us. And he wants, again, us to trust him and not just to believe that he exists. But he wants a personal relationship with every single person in this room. And you know what? 
And the relationship that you're going to have or have with him is going to be unique. It's going to be different from the person who sits next to you because you are unique. And because he is such an awesome God, he treats all of us in a special way. So he knows what you like and he does dislike. And so he's going to have a special connection with you that I may not have with him, but he's going to have a special one with me. He wants, we want to talk about why God wants a relationship with us. Why in the world does a God in heaven want a relationship with us? I think David said, who is God who will be even mindful? Why does he even think about us? But yet, he thinks about us. And we are constantly on our mind, on his mind. We, we want to talk about how to hear from God. How to hear from God. How many of us have prayed, but it seems like we haven't gotten the answer, or we don't believe we heard, or we're wondering, did he say something and I missed it? <laughs> Or again, does he only talk to certain people? Or are we looking for God to talk to us in a certain way where he's really spoken, but we're looking over here because we're thinking the message is going to come from this direction and the message may have come from the wano on the street. Because that's just how God works. He can speak. He can speak to us. For years, if you will, for years, you know, I grew up in, in, in the church. And then after a period of time when I was doing a teenage year and so forth, I was exposed. And I want to uh, already offer my apologies to anyone who may have been in a Pentecostal, you know, Pentecostal. But I, I need to tell you, there was some zealous Pentecostals that kind of threw me off track, if you will. And, 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 and what had happened, you know, I was... Uh, visiting this church, and um, those of you, Pastor Queen would know, when my husband, he would, when I was dating him, he, he could take you into some churches. <laughs> I would leave that at that. <laughs> and so they were well, these people had well intentions, I do believe, but, you know, the worship leader would get up and the preacher and all of them would get up, and they would be busy talking about how you're supposed to praise the Lord. You know what I mean? It was like if you didn't get up and shout, you know what I mean? If you didn't have a holy dance, then you got a problem with God. That's how it would come across. You know, why don't you put your hands together? If you really, really love the Lord, you need to get up off of your feet because didn't he give you some energy and strength to bring you in here? Why don't you just stand up and praise the Lord? How can you sit down on God? Well, maybe if you just shut up for a minute. <laughs> You know, they kind of come at you attacking and condemning you because you don't praise God the way that they praise God. Some people are quiet worshipers. Everybody doesn't praise God the same way. And so I was getting really turned off because it was like this guy or these people will come at you like you had to praise God a certain way. And then they're going to throw shade at you from the pulpit. Oh, if you don't put your hands together, why are you sitting there and looking dead at me while I'm sitting there? You know, they, 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 they had you going through these changes and, and, and beginning to wonder. And, I, you know, I began to question my relationship. And I, I was figuring out, and when I just came to the conclusion, well, maybe I'm just not that spiritually deep. And if I got to do all of that, then I am not interested. I was one of those kind of persons. You know what I mean? If I got to go through all of those changes and I got to hoop and holler and flip and spit, I am not interested. So, and so, you know, it's like if you don't spend hours prostrate before the Lord, if you don't speak in tongues, and, 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 and they were comparing, you know, I began to compare myself. Well, you know what? I wasn't speaking in tongues then, and can I be honest with you? I don't speak in tongues now. And I know I'm tight with the Lord. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's for, it's for however, and, and, and so... What I discovered, what I discovered that having a relationship with God, it was not about trying to be perfect. It was not about trying to be the spiritual elite person. It was not trying to be so holier than thou. It was not trying to be comparing myself to someone else because, again, everybody's relationship and how we worship is private. It's personal, I should say. And so it should not be condemning to how someone is. I'm not saying that we can't learn. I'm just simply saying 
do we condemn? And so I was in this place, and, I, and, and again, I, I learned what I'm learning even now to this day, that having a relationship with God is not about man-made rituals and rules and unbiblical church traditions. Having a relationship is not only knowing about him, it's knowing him on a personal level. What has he done for you lately? What has it done? So when it comes to demonstrating the love of God and what it means to be in a relationship with him, if I have to be honest and look into the scripture, Jesus broke every rule in the book. He talked and ate with sinners, but yet he loved the Lord. He forgave the woman who was caught in adultery. He picked grain and fed his hungry disciples on the Sabbath day. He touched those who were spiritually unclean. But the thing of it is, Jesus did not come to establish a religion. That was already done. What he came to do was to build a relationship between God and his people. We already had a religion. He came to build. Often we hear that Christianity is not a religion but a relationship. And I want us to take a pause on that for one minute. One minute. And the reason why I want us to pause in that because we really need to stop and think because, see, when it comes to the truth of the matter is the Jewish religion was given by God to the Jews. So Christianity is a religion. It is a religion. And so we need to we define what a religion is. You know, uh, what a religion is is, is, is is a body of truth, if you will, pertaining to God that informs the community of faith of how to live according to God's truth. That's what God gave to the Jews. And what Jesus did was he came to teach us how to rightly relate to God through the religion that leads to a right relationship and a right experience with God. That's what he came to do. How to have a relationship with him and to show us how much God loves us. In Luke, the 11th chapter, the disciples saw Jesus in an intimate conversation with God. And Jesus, they noticed that Jesus wasn't caught up with certain rules and rituals. They noticed that he was just talking to God and calling him Father. And as they were sitting there and looking at them, they too, they wanted that thing too. They wanted to get close. We're not the only ones who were trying to seek. They wanted to know, how do you do that? How, how do you do that, Jesus? And Jesus started off and he said, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and he, him who knocks, the door will be open. What was Jesus saying to the disciples? Je Jesus was saying God earnestly wants to be with us and he wants to spend time with us. And the truth of the matter is I don't think we really can grasp just how deeply God loves us. Yes, we know Jesus went to the cross, but do we really grasp what that really means? Of how much that he really wants to be, us, be with us. He wants us to draw closer to him. He wants to be in a relationship with us. Because he loves you. In closing, as we go back to the passage of 40, Isaiah 49 and 16. When I hit that, looked at that passage again, I mean, it really just blessed my soul. And it says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of your hands. Let's look at that really quick. Now look at your palms of your hand. As you look at the palm of your hand, just imagine that God is looking down at his palm. And as you look at that, just have this imagination. The word says that he has engraved your image, your picture, your face into his hand. He didn't print it. He didn't draw it. It has been engraved. It wasn't tattooed in. He, he, he has cut your face into his hands. He won't ever go away. He, your image, whenever he looks, he sees you because he, you, your, your face is right there in the palm of your hand. He, he has etched it. He has carved it out in the palm of his hand, your face. Your face. It's right there in the palm of the hand. There aren't any criteria to be in the palm of his hand. The only criteria is, is to be a creation of God. And you are a creation because he created you. So therefore you qualify to be in the palm 
of his hand. He values you. That's just how much he values you. And then the passage goes on to say that your walls are ever before me. And let me just explain that really quickly. Because see, back in the ancient times, walls were used to record the details of history, of people's lives, if you will. If you go over to the Smithsonian, to different museums, you would see the engravings of pictures or photographs. Look in a book, you would see how history has been written out on the walls. And what God is saying to us here, he's saying your, your life has been written on the walls before me, and it stays before me. He's saying, I know everything about you. I know your dreams. I know your achievements. I know your fears. I know what you're running away from. I know what you're trying to get to. He's saying to you, he says, look, I know what hurts you. I know about your disappointments. I know about your successes. I know everything about you. Keep in mind that I am the one who has numbered every strand of hair on your head. I'm the one. So nothing in your life is hidden from me. No matter how hard you may try or hide or how much you want to stay away, he's saying, nothing about you is hidden. And I love you anyway. I love you anyway. I love you anyway. So don't get hung up on your past. Don't even trip out about your present because I don't know what you left to get here. He said, in spite of it all, I love you anyway. And your picture is in the palm of my hand. God bless you.